Hey, what's up you guys? Last week I did an Instagram takeover for the Haemophilia Society's page and today I'm going to be answering some of the questions that I got last week. In my experience, the thing that I found most difficult whilst I was growing up was having bleeds because it would always limit what I could do. It meant that I couldn't go to school, I couldn't go out and socialise with my friends, you know? And as a child, I never really understood what haemophilia was or I had that impression of, why me? Why can't it be someone else? As I never really had that understanding of what haemophilia was. I'm quite self-aware of what my body's capabilities are and what its limits are. And that came through a lot of trial and error. Like for example, when I was losing weight, there were days where I could go for a 30 minute run and there were days where I could only go maybe 20 minutes walking before I started to have like a lot of joint complications. So a big part for me with my haemophilia is listening to my body and acknowledging when I have like an ache or pain and to see whether if it's just a general ache or pain or if it is actually a bleed. Another thing is I do try to take my treatment on time, you know, like every other patient does. However, life gets in the way and sometimes I just forget. You would think that would never happen though considering I have to take it like every three days, but you'd be surprised. I don't recommend it though, do take your treatment. No, so I don't blame her and the reason is I am a genetic mutation. So she had the mutated X chromosome which she passed down to me. So I can't blame her for that because it's simply genetics. It's not like she chose like, okay, Jay, yeah, he's gonna have haemophilia, okay? We can't help what our genetics are. However, what we can do is become well-informed patients with the condition. Therefore, so when we have a bleed, we know how to treat the body with care, we know how to take the treatment, we know what the treatment does, we know our body's capabilities and limits, therefore preventing more bleeds and more joint trauma. Yeah, so for me, I disclosed it on my application form because a few different reasons. First of all, the Disability Act. If I were still having target bleeds at work and it was in, say, one of my joints, I would persistently be off because of that. And because of the Disability Act, they wouldn't be able to discriminate against me because of that. So that was my first main reason for disclosing that. Secondly, my other reason was if anything were to ever happen to me whilst I'm at work where somehow I fall out unconscious, I don't know. But if that were the case, then my work would know what to do in that situation and take me to a hospital where there is a haemophilia treatment centre so that way I can get medication there and also the doctors that know me could look after me. Also there have been times where I've had like aches and niggles at work and I usually just say oh I think I'm having a bleed they'll let me go and take my medication and then it just completely stops anything from happening there. So that was another reason for me telling them to say, hey, I have haemophilia and this is what the condition is. So my first piece of advice is listen to your body. Know if you're having a good day or a bad day. And if you're having a bad day, take the time to rest. However, if you're having a good day, something that I'd highly recommend is a guided meditation. And the reason for that is solely because in my experience doing guided meditations, I can feel where I'm holding tension in my body. And I can also feel my arthritic joints and feel how just tense and like chock-a-block they are. I can also feel how it affects the muscles in that surrounding area. And from that, try doing some physiotherapy exercises and stretching and strengthening both the muscles in and around that joint. Because as long as those muscles around that affected area are strong, they can help take off the strain that's on that joint. So I learned to inject when I was 16 years old and I have actually made a video about this so you can check that video out just up there. I'm not sure which side it's on. So I've never done any sort of sports that gave me a bleed. I've always been a fan of like tennis and badminton, you know, and um, they've never given me like any sort of bleeds. I one time, however, did do football and it was also the one time that I did do it, I broke my wrist. So football and me, nah. However, something else that I have done both for fun and also as a student is dancing. And there was a year where I did ballet, jazz and tap. And I noticed that for myself, the more physically fit I was, the less amount of bleeds I was having. And also my joint health actually got a lot better through being physically fit. But as always, when it comes to any sport, use your common sense, know if your body can do it or can't do it, know if you're having a good day or a bad day. Thank you so much for joining me this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to give it a like, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave me a little comment below about another question you have and I'll be sure to answer it soon. Don't forget to check out these videos down below. I made them just for you. I'll see you there.